I've got a magnificent place for you today. And here it is here, it's huge. There's a secret in the garage, the two bays there. It's not just the 14 or 16 foot ceiling. There's a secret. So I'll have to, have to tell you the secret. And in 16 acres-ish, uh, and uh, this shop, which is spectacular, blacktop driveway, two ponds, one's gorgeous. The other one needs a little cleaning up, it's okay. And just a few minutes to Berea, the artisan town. We're gonna get to see it all. Hold to the end. Please tell me what you think of this. I need your opinion, drop me a comment. You know I read every one of your comments. So I appreciate that. We're gonna go through the whole thing. Full cavity search on this house here in Berea, Kentucky in the 400s. Call Mimi right here. Stick around, don't touch that dial. Because I said so, because you love me. Well, because I love you. Maybe you don't love me, but stick around anyway. What the heck? What are you doing that's better than watching a nice house video? Come on now. We're gonna go in the shop and everything. I'm looking at you and I feel the tension. You know this could be like a fun I am right here doing my best to make you feel like I do How you all doing this morning? We are going up the road to see this lady. Another lady we know up the road's got a place for you. 16 acres. It's a really cool house. It's got a gated entry. The road's getting narrower and narrower and that's just the way these roads go sometimes. This is, the town is Berea, Kentucky. Actually, this is a lot of fun for me because I get to see all this stuff. I gotta turn this thing around. Hold on a second. Look how cool that place is. Log cabin and a, kind of an entryway like that. This is really pretty. Berea is beautiful. Anyway, it's it's right at the entrance of the Appalachian Mountains. You're getting real close to Daniel Boone National Forest and all that stuff. How pretty it is. And it was all foggy here. Just up on the top of the hill. Now I'm down here, no fog. That's the best thing about Kentucky. In a blink, the weather changes. I hope I'm gonna recognize this. I don't even know the number. Anyway, it's uh, three bedrooms, three baths, or something like that. And I've seen pictures of it. It's pretty neat looking. You know, everybody's got something. Well, the first thing on the top of my uh, shoot sheet is don't open the cabinets. So she's, <laughs> she's freaking out. She knows my videos and she knows I open the cabinets. I don't open the cabinets to look at your stuff. We never look at the stuff. I mean, sometimes I comment because it's really full. Well, so are mine. Everything's a crap lanch at my house. But we're not looking at, at see what your stuff is. I'm not looking at your pills. Oh, here we got the leakage pills or something. You know, that's not that's not it at all. That's I, should, I, can, I guess I probably should edit that out. Look at how pretty. Come on now, this is Kentucky. Another entry here. And the quintessential blackboard fence. That stuff's real high, everything's high, right? You know, that's like $6.50 a foot now, $7 a foot to put that up. And it's not bad if you only need one foot, but you know, if you're gonna put half a mile around your place, it starts to add up. Now here's a road that's interesting, just a little gravel road. And there's, what, six or seven mailboxes, so you know there's probably six or seven people down there. Got a double wide there. In the country, ain't no shame in a double wide. Oh, I know it. Here it is. Here it is. I remember seeing the pictures. That is a welded pipe fence. That is a very Texas thing. Yeah, whoever did that pipe fence is very Texas. Look at this. Woo, woo. Entry with an elk. Crane Creek. I guess there's a creek here somewhere. 
think you can see my dirty windshields. Gorgeous pond. Now, at first blush, you're gonna say, you know what? That pond needs to be dipped out. Or what's wrong with that pond, right? Because you got lily pads and all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with that pond. I'll tell you what, our ponds at our house, it's drier than popcorn farts. It's half the size. This thing is full, so you know this is a full-on spring, and you can get grass-eating carp, and they'll clean that pond out there in a heartbeat. Or you could put uh, that copper stuff, that blue stuff that you get at Tractor Supply, and that'll kill the weeds. Not my cup of tea. I try to stay away from the chemicals. But that's a beautiful creek. Uh, I'm sorry, that's a beautiful pond, and then there's the, the Crane Creek. I've never been here before, so... Pardon my stuttering. Sounds like I had a stroke or something. How beautiful. Beautiful metal roof on that house. Uh, we got a big, beautiful barn. Oh, this is a winner. This is a winner for all our clients. I can tell you that. Really excited to see this. I think I might just take this barn home with me. Boy, you're sitting so far off the road, you would never hear anything. Those are super tall. That's a six foot eight inch door, right? That's the typical door here, seven foot door. So that's that's 10 foot overhead, two, oh, 10 foot overhead doors. I've never met these folks. Let's see what's going on. Okay, I had to get everything. I had to do all the niceties and shake hands and all that stuff and get all the scoop on the house too to share with you the barn is going to be magnificent you're going to love that there's a dog kennel and there's also a horse run in the back and there is a miniature horse stable down there so if it's it's not a small stable but it's for small horses uh, bad dad joke number one let's see how many we can get oh, those guys are always chasing after each other Okay, this house is huge. I said 4,100. It's 4,100 with the garage. So it's really only like 2,800, but the garage is heated, but it's not living space. We know that, right? So, I mean, we're friends. Let's not get all picky about everything here. I'm just walking into this joint. Where's Mamie? I don't know. She's probably having lunch somewhere with somebody. When you come to town, you need to make an appointment with her. Mimi's the nicest lady in the world, but she wants to make sure that somebody's going to be around to take care of you and make her take you to lunch. A lot of people just pop in, and I'm like, oh my goodness, don't just pop in. Is there a light bulb in there? What's going on? It's plugged in. There we go. It's amazing what a little electricity will do. Yes, the walls are painted white, semi-gloss white. Hey, that's why they make 31 varieties. You do whatever you want. But I just want to let you know, some people go, what? And other people go, oh, I love it. It's so neat and clean. So it's whatever you like. This gas fireplace, propane tank in the back, every once in a while the power goes out when you live in the country. Well, heck, if you live anywhere, the power's going to go out from time to time. When the power goes out, you can still keep warm with that. It heats most of the house and keeps the frost off the pumpkin, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not a dirty innuendo. No, it's not. Stop. You made it weird. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay, the cabinets. This is the one that I'm banned from touching the cabinets. So I said to her, I said, the first thing on the list is do not open cabinets. And she's laughing. She goes, well, I meant like personal drawers. I, I never open up personal drawers in the bedroom. I don't want to find stuff in there. I mean, I know what you'd find if it was my house, and that is not good. No bueno. These cabinets are ginormous, so I'm going to open them because I can, because I got permission from her. I'm going to guess, are they 30 inches deep? They're way more than 24 inches deep. I don't know. I'll find a measuring tape here or something, but these suckers are so deep. You'll have stuff back there. You'll have that air fryer that Aunt Tilly gave you from 1984. All right, here, these guys are adjustable, so you can adjust anything you want. Really nice, but those are big. Here, let's measure real quick. 
I tell my boys, you should know if you're a size 10 and a half or 11 shoe or whatever, your feet are about 12 inches long. And you should know what three inches and four and whatever. And, and this is my eight from tip to tip. All right, so here's it. We've got one, two, three, 24 plus about four. They're about 30 inches deep, 20, 28 inches deep, something like that. Wow, it's deep. It's close. Now, don't stick me for a, an inch or two because, you know, I'm doing the best I can. This is all I got for a measuring stick. If you want me to get a better measure, you have to mail it to me. Little patio out there in a three season room, which they use all the time. I said, I bet you do. That's a handy dandy. Okay, here we go again. How big is this rascal? This is big. Just the countertop now. One, two, three, four, five. So that times eight, 40 inches. There you go. Nice big deep cabinets here. And you can put all your stuff in there. We don't have to open up. Ah, oh, the junk drawer. I knew that was going to be a junk drawer. All right, let's, should we open this one? Are we going to have a second junk drawer? Nope. These people are way too nice for that. Huge pantry right off of the, cab, the, uh, the kitchen. So that's where you want. Of course, you've got this pantry thing here. Look at this. Like, that's a lot of stuff for two people, even four people. But what would you put in here? You could literally make this home office, workshop, sewing room. That's another great thing. They got a little fridge in here. They got, they got miniature horses. They got miniature refrigerators. Huh. You could put a freezer in here. You got the water heater. And these people are way too neat. Look at that. I never saw one of those. Well, golly. Perfect space for this kind of stuff. You don't want this in a regular house. You want to have it somewhere? You got a place for it. Let's see what we got over here. We got a little breaker box here, square D. Only the best. No, Square D does not sponsor me, but they are certainly welcome to send me cash or product. We're always building something. Nice closet, plenty of room, and you got a half bath. Hi there. Well, half bath, it's a, oh, that's a, like a comfort height, but that's a fancy one. That's expensive. Jacuzzi brand. Oh, I'm going to save the garage for last. I'm telling you, you got to trust me. I can't let you down. I got to check in the fridge. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, Starbucks. Nice. Hot dog rolls. I love hot dogs. Chocolate cream, cre chocolate cream cake and barbecue sauce. Dude, you got it all. And parquet. It's everything. Everything you need is in this property, is in this house. But tell them they're going to have to leave. Look at all the good stuff in there. Clam chowder, come on now. Tell them they're going to have to leave the refrigerator. Say, Mimi, they got to leave the refrigerator stocked. So when we come in, we rolling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Some things are just not as funny as others. All right, so eat-in kitchen. Plenty big enough. Oh, let's look at the three-season while we're here. It's got one of these cool dealios here. Look at this. Look. It's got that, and then, and then, it, and then up here, you get this other one. You get this other one here, and it shuts it off. So if you're here having dinner, and the sun's too bright, bloop, no problem. If you want privacy, whatever, the squirrels will see you. Nice, and the cool thing is, this is on. It's. It's on the inside, but it pops out easy, so you can repair it if you need to. Because you gotta think about these things. That's a really nice door. We're looking to put a new door. My mom's house. I have to see what brand that is. Three season room. Tile floor. And that's like the real porcelain tile right there. That's not the ceramic tile. The porcelain, the color goes all the way through. So if it gets chipped or anything, it doesn't look like, you know, Bad fingernail polish, right? Transom lights. Just go right on that side. They have two kitties, and I can't let the kit the kittens out. And that's locked. And then that's locked as well. 
and then that comes up and you can't get out of that one either. So I don't know how to get out and that's fine. You can see right from here. The woods are right there. That's the property line and it goes all the way to the other road on the other side. So I know you're not gonna have a house right there. Now, everybody wants to talk about the heating and air. All right, so we look around and if we see nothing, then we have to assume that it's um, like radiant heat or they even have ceiling cable heat, which is really kind of weird. And here you have the vent. So, okay, so we got central heat and air, forced air, but what fuels it? Is it all electric? Very popular here. Is it a dual fuel? Very popular here. Is it a heat pump? Super popular here. And the creme de la creme, the piece de resistance of central heat and air here uh, is geothermal. They punch three or five wells in the ground, 100, 150 feet deep, and they run a loop with fluid in it. And that fluid is like an antifreeze type of fluid. And it goes down into the ground. The ground heats it, or cools it, I'm sorry, or heats it, whatever, to 58 degrees, because it's 58 degrees so many feet down. And you have all this 58 degrees. Then it comes up here and the air blows over it. So now you're only heating from 58 to 70 instead of you know 10 degrees outside sometimes, right? In February, it'll get really cold like close to zero. The average in here in Kentucky is 40 during the day and 28 at night, but you know what I mean. Every once in a while it gets colder than a Dickens. So it's only, it's not heating it from 28 or 10 or what, zero to 70, that's a lot of energy. All the air in this house is a big house, 10, 12 foot ceilings here. So you're only heating it from 58 to 70. And, and conversely, the air is 80 degrees outside, which is like our average 80, 82 in the hottest month. So you're not heating it from 82 down to 76. You're heating it, you're cooling it from 58 uh, to 76. It's wonderful. It's brilliant. I'm telling you. Okay. Hold on one second. I have a secret and I can't show you in here. Hold on one second. Okay. I, I had a really cool secret to show you, but I'm too weak or I'm too old or I'm too fat or I'm too out of shape. I can't do it, but I'm going to show you this right anyway. Pretend you can't see that. This is the memorabilia room, the office, whatever you want to do with it. A den, it would make an awesome anything. Uh, it's got these lit memorabilia things. They got better into cars, so that's cool. And home office, all that. This bookcase is supposed to be here. Now, you could put hinges on this, and you'd have the, the uh, private room. But it's all solid oak. I mean, that's oak. These are oak, and it's heavier than the Dickens. I can't open. I can't lift it. I was going to lift it and pull it there. And then you come in here, and you got the closet. So I would put it on hinges. You could still use it as a safe room if you think they're going to come and get us or something. Uh, that's fine. Put your put some uh, food in here and some guns or whatever. I'm cool with it. I don't judge. Then, but still put this on hinges so you can at least get in and get out, right? Because you can't lift it unless you're a big brute of a man. And I evidently am not. I can't lift it. It's too daggone heavy. This has got to be 10, 11, 12 foot. It's got to be 12 foot ceilings. Twelve foot easy, because it's double me easy. That's six foot eight. Yeah, whatever. Ten, eleven, twelve. All right, bedroom. I'm sorry, living room. I've only been doing this forty-one years. It's my first day. Living room, uh, granny flat. What would you do with it? Uh, it's got this big door. Maybe. Open it all up and make a crazy sized dining room or a, a den or a home theater or something. The world is your oyster. Bedroom number one. We call it boudoir numero uno. Nice bath. And then it's got a full dinghy over here. You want to see it here, of course. That's a one piece, brilliant. 
No chance of leaks there. And that's got a comfort height toilet as well. It's got a huge linen. I'm not gonna go inside, but look, it's huge. Look at it. Huge, huge. It's got a huge linen. I told her I wouldn't go in, so I'm not gonna go in. Oh, and by the way, so there is the uh, vent right there. And then this is called the return. So it's taking the, the cool air uh, and not the hot air from up top, right? The cool air and recirculating it back down. So at the top, it's what? 74. Down here, it might be 70. I don't know what the numbers are, but it's pulling that out. So it's already got like preheated air. And the best thing about geothermal, and I don't want this whole video to be about geothermal, is that their electric bill is $115 on average. And you can, you can put it on a, um, what they call it, on a budget. So they say, well, it's going to be 1500 bucks. So they'll put you on a hundred and a quarter every month. And so if it goes to 150 one month, you'd still pay a hundred and a quarter. If it goes down to a hundred one month, you still pay a hundred and a quarter. So you can do it on the budget plan or they used to be able to do that. I guess they still can. Uh, and I don't know if theirs is, but he said 115 average. So I believe him. There's a window right there. So you could rearrange here if you wanted to. Wow, big cedar closet. Look at that, and access to the attic. There's your other vent. In geothermal, you're not gonna see like two, three vents in each room. Like we have gas and we have two, three vents in every room. And I don't know why they do that. You'd have to ask your HVAC specialist. This is not zero entry, but it's as close as you can get. It's up maybe four, four inches, maybe. And it's got that wicked cool head on there. Jet tub. And then the frosted art glass here, so you can't see in, can't see out. I mean, you've got the light, but if they're not going to see anything. You've got a um, you've got a linen here. Again, we've been asked not to open the, the cabinets, so I'm not going to open them. Another twin vanity. So this is the master, clearly. And you've got a bedroom there and a bathroom here. This is not a junior master. No, can't say that. And then what do we have here? We have the third bedroom, which is petite. Plenty big for a queen bed, even a king bed. You could throw a king bed in here. It's plenty big. And the little home office area there. Maybe this is all home office for you. Totally up to you. Whatever you want to do, it's your house. Now, one of my pet peeves is these bulbs that are too white. I got a lot of friends who say, they're brighter that way. I said, well, the lumens don't have to do anything with the, the color temperature, but that's up to you. Me personally, I like them a little warmer, like this one. I like that glow. Makes me feel cozy. You know how it feels when you're cozy? You're doing all this uh, bloopers and everything all by yourself. I deserve a camera person. I mean, I really do. Come on now. My boys don't want to do it. I think they should do it. I think we've seen the house. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I have something for you. I forgot. Do not let me forget. What is behind door number one, eh? <laughs> the biggest garage you've ever seen in your life. Tw she said 20 foot ceilings. It's not 20 foot ceilings. But those are 10. And that's easily another four, maybe five. And a half court basketball court. Come on now, this is cool. This is heated. You see the little gas, the gas heater in there? Now, I don't, I'm not a gas heater expert. I do have, we've got several dozen of those things and we love the Resnor. You just put it in, they're electronic. It, it just goes and you're done. That one needs service, I think she said. Uh, don't hold me to it, you gotta call Mimi. That's why I'm putting her number right in there. You can give her a buzz. And this is all welded pipe. Very cool. Sturdy, super sturdy stairs. Now, this is, you're wondering, what's this buggy thing here? Well, it's the, you can't see it, but it's the um, nearly six foot high crawl space. Why would you want a six foot high crawl space and not go two more feet? It wouldn't have cost $5,000 to go up a few more blocks and throw a heat and air unit in there, another seven grand or whatever. My goodness, what's wrong with people? but they didn't do it. It would have given you a lot more space. You know what? 
you could come in here with a mini excavator and you could dig it out and you could still do that. So you got a good place to start. I don't know if it's six foot all the way or not. I'm just rambling on, but just to give you an idea, I'm not telling you what to do. Good God, you sound like my mother. Just trying, trying to throw some ideas out there. That heater doesn't look that old. This whole house is not that old, really. How nice is that? You want your kids somewhere you can hang out with every night after dinner, you can come out here and shoot some hoops with your kids. That'd be the way to do it. <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, my wife and I, we could have like drunk basketball. That'd be fun. Uh, more space. This lady, she's such a nice lady. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I said, everybody's stuff looks the same. I'm just telling you. Their stuff looks just like your stuff. And they want to know what it looks like. Wow, how quiet is that? I think she said this is a new operator. It's on the spring thing up there. Nice. Everybody's got stuff. You want to, You say, where am I gonna put my stuff? You look in her closet, you like, there's her stuff. That's just like my stuff. So I got room for my stuff. I love these operators. All right, bring it on down. Bag it up, Tear. Bag it up. Bag up, Tear. Put it reverse, Tear. Put it reverse. Oh, Lord. And these are insulated, and you got the heat there. You got insulated walls here. I guarantee it. You got insulation in the ceiling or the attic or whatever. So it wouldn't be that hard to heat this up. At least keep the frost off the pumpkin. And that's Roundup. I don't touch that stuff. That's terrible stuff. I know a lot of people use it, but that doesn't mean I got to use it. All right, now on to the barn. Let's see the barn next. Heck yeah, let's do it. Now, I don't know why I'm going out this way instead of going through the, the garage, but you can go through the garage. Okay, so here you can see everybody coming up. You see the aerials here. Awesome, totally awesome. Uh, by the way, the ride coming in is from this side. It's from this side, coming in this way. And it was, it was breathtaking, breathtaking. So we talked about the HVAC geothermal win. I mean, like a new geothermal system costs you at least 20, 25 grand. Now, if the system goes down, that's, you know, just regular money. Like, I don't know, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. The wells are already there. So it's not that big of a deal. Does that make sense? So you got like one third or more of the value is already done for you. And you know, in 25 or 30 years, whatever, then you got to put a new one in, but you don't have to, you're not in any worse shape than the guy across the street who's got a regular system like we have. I just, I kick myself that we didn't do geothermal. So we could come out here. We, oh, okay. We'd come out here. I'm interrupting myself all the time because my head's ping pong and there's so much to talk about here. All this ground is usable. It's all level, level, level for Kentucky. Uh, so much of it's usable. You know, some of these places we, got, even my place, you know, you can't use those hillsides, but you got plenty of place out front. You could even lop off a couple lots out uh, out front if you got in dire straits money-wise and sell those, sell those off. Or you could run your horses. There's a creek down below and two beautiful ponds. You see the one pond here. I'll put a video of it. Isn't that glorious? Oh my gosh. Throw some uh, grass-eating carp in there or white amber fish. That's what the crossbreed that they used to have. Check it out. Just go to Southern States. They'll tell you when the fish man comes. He comes in the spring. He comes in the fall. And then you just go in there and he gives you a plastic bag, puts some water in it, shoots oxygen, ties it up. You hand him 50 bucks and you're done. And you can get all kinds of fish. And he'll tell you. You say, hey, I got this pond. It's about yay big and it's yay deep and it's got no fish in it and it's got a lot of grass. He go, I know exactly what you need. So that's, that's great advice. The guy at the hatchery knows, and they come to Southern States twice a year. And there's one right in Berea, which is not far. I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. I, I'll have to put that all down because I came from the other side. I don't know how far it is. So you got the field in the front, you got the pond, you got the two ponds. The other one needs to be cleaned out. It's smaller, but it's magnificent. She said it's all uh, like rock on the side or something. Uh, definitely worth your time to do that. Hire somebody to do it or whatever. And then the creek 
and then this all this yard you could put in run-in sheds out here you could build more over here you got lots of room to put a ginormous shed. you could put a 300 foot shop over here on this side if you needed to i don't know what you'd do with a 300 foot shop but maybe you're in the excavating business or whatever plenty of power up here house is built like a tank the property line is the trees like I mentioned. And then here's this little round horse stall. It's for very tall horses. She had dogs out here. I said, how tall are your dogs? And she's like, what do you mean? I said, well, I don't know. What do you think? So you can put a pony out here or whatever. You might have to do something down here. Oh, it's got, no, it doesn't. Just this one. Well, anyway, that's there. And that's stout. That's all iron. Then we got these this dog kennel thing. Now she said that they had this was set up for six doggies, but they had great Pyrenees, which you know those are the guardian dogs. Those things are huge, and they just love people, but they do not like coyotes. So they will protect your sheep and all that stuff. So they busted out. Uh, that one's three. This is a two banger, and that's a one banger. So whatever you got a border collie, you can put that in there. You can put three Pyrenees or three Pyrenees and whatever. If you know what you're looking at, you know what you're looking at. Me, I don't have dogs like that, so I don't know. But that's a handy dandy kitchen gadget right there. All that concrete, it's all concrete in there too. So you can just hose it down, hose all their oils off and stuff. All right. We'll go to the shed over here. Can't see in the shop, not allowed to. Okay, we're gonna look at this. All black top, sweet. You could fit easy two Suburbans in here and a tractor. Well, a tractor and a Suburban and two Suburbans. I don't know, it's 50 feet long. What do you want from me? I don't have a measure. Please start a GoFundMe page for me to buy a measure or something. I've got a laser in the truck, so. I'll try to get a thing here. Ay, you guys are relentless on me. Nice workshop for a very tall person. This is up to almost to my boot. Uh, like, like this. You got extra storage up in there. You got a loft up in there. If you buy a place like this, you're gonna need a tractor like this. This is a four wheel drive. I'm assuming it's diesel. It's got a front end loader. It's got forks. Here's a fork thing. I think that's what that is, forks. And it's got a five or six foot Farm King. It'd be nice if they put it on there. It's at least six foot, might be seven foot. Finish mower. Uh, it says Y750. So your guess is as good as mine. Is it seven and a half feet? Possibly, don't know. But it's more than six feet. If I laid down on top of that, not only but it, would it be really weird and awkward, <laughs> and for you more so than me, I'm sure, but, uh, but it's longer than me. And that's a real tractor. I never heard of YMK. Oh, it's, it runs on biodiesel, so this is a diesel. If you buy this place, you're going to need a tractor like this. Please call Mimi and talk to her and tell her to help you negotiate this before they sell it to the neighbor, which they may be doing you know when people are like ready to move pfft, we're ready to move let's get out of here this is already sold to the neighbor uh maybe i think this one's definitely sold to the neighbor i don't know you got to talk to mimi she knows all that stuff that's why i put her number right here she's the agent i'm nobody you know all that jazz but beautiful shop and plenty of room to store all your extras and that's a big old eye beam i mean that's a really big eye beam that's a real beam and that's how you get that clear space over there. Very nice. I love it. Do you love it? I think just close these up. Now, you're not going to make me walk all the way down to that miniature horse thing. That's just like a carporty thing. And uh, miniature horses go down in there. All right, I'll walk down there. You can burn my Fitbit up. I got to get lunch. Popeye's chicken is calling me. Man, we got to build another shop. We're getting all kinds of quotes, crazy prices. 
$40,000, $50,000 for one that size. Kills me. I'm like, I just needed to play around with to store some stuff. I don't want to spend 50 grand to store $10,000 worth of stuff. Go buy it again. I know, I know it's not responsible and it's not organized, but here I am. Now, if you want to take care of all this, you get you a zero turn like they've got, or my favorite Kubota. They've got great deals on them. Uh, we just bought two more uh, diesel. The first one's lasted us 20 years. And then these will last theoretically another 20 years. They've got, and you got to finagle the financing a little bit. They usually have zero interest. So that's a good thing. And it's usually like just till like 60 months. But for an extra $700, you can buy uh, 72 months or another few hundred bucks on that. You could buy uh, 84 months. So you can get six or seven years interest free for like 700 bucks, 800 bucks. All right. So it puts your payments at virtually nothing down. I don't think we put anything down on these two that we just bought and uh, two fifteen a month, something like that. Now it's going to cost you $300 a week to have somebody come and mow this, or you get your superhero with the superpowers and you lease him or her the front field and half of this field for hay. And maybe they'll bush hog the rest of it for you. Or maybe they got a son who's going to do it for you for a hundred bucks or whatever. But if, and even maybe use your equipment. So go buy you a, a nice commercial zero turn. And it's going to be about $200 a month for um, 84 months, something like that. So 15 grand. Now, you, I'm not saying you can't get them for four or $5,000 at Lowe's, but I guarantee you, you'll go through one every season or more uh, with this much to mow. You know, there's, you're mowing a full, what, eight acres, 10 acres. That zero turn, it's awesome. Our son, he puts a uh, earphones in, he puts his Kubota hat on and he's got his little water thing and zoom, he goes and he loves it. And three, four hours he's done. And uh, we make him a big meal and he goes back to college and we pay for his dorm. So there you go. That's, that's, uh, that's the transparency of our full economics of how we get our lawn mode for reasonable. <laughs> Cost me 200 bucks a month, which I can deduct because I'm over 10 acres. And you're over 10 acres here. What is it? 15 and something, almost 16 acres. So all kinds of stuff, the four-wheeler, the side-by-side, -side, chainsaws, all that stuff, fully deductible. No questions asked. Schedule F on your tax return. F for farm. I don't know why they call it F, but that's what, the way I remember it. You know, ag, whatever, farm, farm, schedule F. And then for rents, schedule E. That makes no sense. <laughs> so, that's why I'm a little leery on my theory of F for farm. <laughs> IRS couldn't be that smart. Uh, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. If you, especially if you work for IRS or something. Just kidding, just kidding. I didn't mean anything by it. <laughs> They'll come knocking on my door or something. <laughs> hey, buddy, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, miniature horses. Enough said. Move on. Okay. That I don't know what the deal is with this thing yo here. It's like a, it's got a swale built into it. And I guess water comes off of this hill and then goes right into this swale and out and away and down into the creek, which is perfect and natural and wonderful. So you don't have to worry about that. It's got better topsoil out here, it looks like. Because by our house, you know, you got like this much topsoil. But the grass grows, you know, the fescue grows. Oh, and they got shale here too, a lot of shale, which is really nice for uh, parking lots. It's soft on your feet, soft on tires, and it drains really well. And hey, you remember my video of the roofs? If you don't, watch it here. I'll try to put a thing here so you can go watch it. I want you to know all about metal roofs. And if you have watched my metal roof thing, what kind of metal roofs are these? Whoop, whoop. There we go. Here and there. What kind of metal roof? Tell me. Drop a comment below. Do you love this? I think you're going to love it. You could easily do multi-generational here. And why do I say that? Well, you got two and a half baths. You got a huge kitchen, huge pantry. So you've got the place to put all the stuff. 
And then you've got some nice bedrooms. You got this big garage, which you could, it really be a shame to turn it into living space, but you could do that. You could, you could easily do that. Put a second story in there. It would kill the basketball court, which is really a cool feature. <laughs> I really like that myself. That would have to be some long, hard thinking to get rid of that. So you got plenty of room. Total, it's like 40, whatever I said, square feet. 2,800 for the house, according to Mimi, according to PVA, probably. And then another 1,300 uh, in the garage. It's a big garage. I love it. Let's go up in the drone. Hold on to the end. Looking for a reason Driven by the heart Fighting for a season With sadness fall apart Tell me not to worry Tell me to be strong Be my true recommend you look at this next video, which I think you'll really like too.